Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're just going to discuss the basic anatomy of the bony labyrinth, which is something that you talk about when you're looking at the inner ear. Now, when we talk about the bony labyrinth, it's bony, but it really is filled with a bunch of spaces and tubes, and there's a lot of things inside, which is why it's called a labyrinth. And also because we have all this duct work, goes all over the place, this thing twirls around like a snail, that's why it's called a labyrinth. Um, another term for this that you might see is something called the cochleo-vestibular apparatus. Okay, so let's break this name down. Cochleo refers to the fact that it contains something called the cochlea. The cochlea is over here on the right side, and this is actually going to be the organ of hearing. And then the vestibular apparatus is pretty much everything else. So this line right here, this dotted line, divides the cochlear part of it from the vestibular apparatus half of it. So pretty much all this in here, and then over here on the left, that's gonna be the vestibular apparatus. And collectively, the vestibular apparatus deals with balance and proprioception to contrast it from the cochlea, which deals with hearing. So hopefully that makes sense how this is divided up. Now, if we look on the right side here, as I mentioned, this is the cochlea. Now, the cochlea is the thing that looks like a snail shell. So when I've taught this in the past, um, I've described it as such. It kind of loops around here, then coils in and in and in. And actually, the part where it terminates here is termed the apex of the cochlea. Now, this is going to be the organ of hearing. So when we actually look at this microscope image, this is actually going to be uh, a cross-section of the tubing in the cochlea. Okay? We'll cover this in the following video. All right, uh, cochlea is pretty simple. All this over here is a little bit more complicated, so everything to the left of this dotted line right here, all of this is the vestibular apparatus. Now, having said that, the vestibular apparatus can be further broken down into two regions, and it, it's regions that differentiate it based on function. If we look between these two dotted lines, right in here, this is a region that deals with translational equilibrium, and the region is referred to as the vestibule. Okay. That's actually where the term vestibular comes from in the vestibular apparatus. So all of this right here, I did my best to kind of divide it as best as possible. This is the vestibule. Now the vestibule has two subparts. Okay. That is the utricle and the saccule. These are actually the individual autolithic organs that deal with detecting changes in translational equilibrium. Okay. So the utricle and saccule are sort of subparts of the vestibule. Right? Now, when you're differentiating these two, understand this. The saccule is the one that's closest to the cochlea. It's not a part of the cochlea, but it just happens to be closer. The utricle is closest to these loops, which are actually referred to collectively as semicircular canals. Okay? But utricle and saccule are subparts of the vestibule, this whole thing right here in the middle, and they respond to changes in translational equilibrium. Okay? This would be a situation where you're like going up an elevator or down an elevator, or if you start accelerating forward or backward, okay? um, things like that. But we'll talk about the details of that in a separate video that's more physiology. Okay, that's the first half of the vestibular apparatus. Over here's the other half of this, and these are pretty much just the loops, our semicircular canals, which is the technical term. And there are three semicircular canals. There's one that kind of goes up like this. This is the anterior semicircular canal. There's one that kind of goes perpendicular to that right here. This one is actually the lateral semicircular canal, and one that kind of goes in between them, which is the posterior semicircular canal. Okay. Uh, the semicircular canals collectively respond to changes in rotational equilibrium. So rotation would basically just be spinning on an axis. So if you've ever seen in the Olympics, you see the ice skaters um, during some of their routines, they'll actually rotate around really fast. Um, when they're accelerating during that rotation, the semicircular canals would more respond to that, or at least some of these three would respond to that. Okay. Now, if we look at these semicircular canals, we see that they have these engorgements right here. All three of them do. And all three of these engorgements are in contact with the utricle. Okay? So these engorgements at the base of each of the canals are termed ampullae. 
or singular, an ampulla. Okay. So for example, this engorgement right here where my mouse is, this would be the ampulla of the anterior semicircular canal. This second one would be the ampulla of the lateral semicircular canal. And this one down here would be the ampulla of the posterior semicircular canal. And when you're looking at these ampulla, they're always at the base of the semicircular canal that it correspond to. But all three of these ampullae are in contact with the utricle as you see here. So that's very important to understand when you're trying to figure out which one the utricle is. The saccule is easier because it's the one closest to the cochlea. But make sure you can differentiate between the utricle and each of these three ampullae of each of the semicircular canals. It's also worth noting that if we look inside the semicircular canals, there's ductwork because there's, it's basically hollow with fluid actually moving uh, within the channels in here. And these channels or these uh, ductworks are termed semicircular ducts. So that's an important thing to distinguish. When you're given a model of this on a quiz or an exam, make sure you look at what it's pointing at. If it's kind of opened up and it's pointing to the inside of the canal, most likely your instructor is asking about the semicircular duct. But if they just point to the bony part on the outside and it's not opened up, you're pretty much referring to the semicircular canal. The duct is inside the canal. Okay? And the same thing's true of all of this. If we look at the cochlea, uh, the whole thing, if we looked at it like the bony part on the outside, that's the cochlea. But notice there is duct work inside the cochlea as well. And this would actually be the cochlear duct, which we'll look at in more detail in the following video. Now, one other thing before we conclude this video is that each of these has a nerve associated with it. So the one that comes directly off of the cochlear region, this is the cochlear nerve. And this is a sensory nerve that's going to transmit information regarding hearing to the brain. Now, not shown here, there is a vestibular nerve. And the vestibular nerve would kind of be in this area right here. It actually has a few origins. Um, part of it originates on the utricle and saccule. Another part of it will originate on these ampulla right here of the semicircular canals. But essentially, they all converge into one vestibular nerve, which will run alongside the cochlear nerve. So we have a cochlear nerve and a vestibular nerve. Eventually, those two nerves at some point kind of over here will fuse together and they will become what's called the vestibulocochlear nerve. And that is actually cranial nerve number eight. And it goes to the brain and collectively will give the brain information on both hearing and then also balance proprioception, which of course come from all this over here in the vestibular apparatus. Okay, So hopefully all of this made sense and gave you some good information on the anatomy of the bony labyrinth. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.